My name is Sam Kitoko, and I'm joined by the Chief Administrative Secretary of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Ababu Namwamba. Thank you for making time for us, and Karibu Sana to Series TV. Asante. How is the year so far? It's 20 days into it. <laughs> the year has started well. Uh, mm -hmm. At least, uh, you know, at Foreign Affairs, we say we run an operation that is similar to a hospital. Mm -hmm. So How really, so? <laughs> there is no break. There's no break <laughs> because... Uh, something is always happening somewhere mm -hmm. in some corner of the world which needs the ministry to always be like uh, on high alert. Mm -hmm. But overall, mm -hmm. they have started well, mm -hmm. uh, both in terms of work mm -hmm. and um, uh, at a personal level also. Okay. So I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to complain. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And I uh, just want to start with a very global <coughs> question. Like mm. uh, when you look at uh, 2019, this is your, uh, you came into the ministry sometimes last year. In which month was it? Actually, Sam, today would be exactly a year since my appointment oh, to this. It's one year already. It's one year since uh, the president entrusted uh, uh, CS Dr. Monica Juma mm -hmm. as CS mm -hmm. and uh, Ambassador Masharia Kamau as PS, as PS yes. and myself as CS mm -hmm. to to help to drive Kenya's foreign policy. So we are celebrating a year mm -hmm. in office, uh, in uh, some uh, kind uh, of anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's quite a coincidence. <laughs> so when you look at uh, the 2019 and the agenda for the Foreign Affairs Ministry, what exactly is it and what are we trying to achieve in the year? Uh, some perhaps we could um, start off by just going back to what we regard as the mission mm -hmm. of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, of course, um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in any country is the window through which the world sees mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. the window through which the world views the country. But it also the, it's also the doorway through which the country engages with the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it is a critical, critical uh, ministry. And um, we have uh, clearly defined the mission mm -hmm. of this ministry to be to protect mm -hmm to promote mm -hmm. and to project Kenya's interests mm -hmm. and image globally mm -hmm. through innovative diplomacy and contribute towards a just, peaceful and equitable world. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our mission, you can anchor it there. Mm -hmm. Project, promote mm -hmm. and protect right. Kenya's image. Mm -hmm. And it is an image which must be an image that commands respect I mean, an image that commands attention mm -hmm. and an image that then makes it easy mm -hmm. for us to engage mm -hmm. with the world. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we, see, we seek as a ministry to ensure that uh, we have a peaceful, prosperous, and globally competitive country. Mm -hmm. Now, in that context, you can then be able to sort of lock in the various activities that constitute the agenda mm -hmm. we seek to drive. Right. And you can look at that agenda bilaterally, mm -hmm which means our engagement one-on-one -on -one with the uh, various uh, countries. Mm -hmm. You can look at it regionally, and uh, you can then look at uh, the kind of work we're doing in Somalia, the work that Kenya has been able to do in South Sudan, mm -hmm. work that we are very proud of, by the way, work that we are doing within the East African community. Right. For instance, we are very proud of this concept of one-stop border posts which has integrated services at our border points, mm -hmm. making it very easy to move goods, mm -hmm. people, and services mm -hmm. across the borders of East Africa. The commitment of Kenya to the customs union mm -hmm. for the East African region, for instance. You can then also look at our continental activities, Kenya's position within the African Union, mm -hmm. our contribution to the agenda like the new African continental free trade area, mm -hmm. the free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. Again, it is not a coincidence that Kenya was the first country on the continent mm -hmm. to sign and to ratify this very historic agreement. Right. Then you can go global. Mm -hmm. You can go global, you can look at our position in the UN, our relationship with the, with the, with the European Union. I've just come back from the first ever European Union, African Union, ministerial consultation. Mm -hmm. Again, Kenya's role on that global stage. And so if you look at all these levels, mm -hmm. bilaterally, regionally, continentally, globally, you can be able to pick out how we are driving Kenya's foreign policy, mm -hmm. Kenya's agenda <coughs> to, in the words I have stated earlier, to project 
and uh, and and uh, and protect Pro and promote Kenya right. image uh, globally. Right, and let's get into specifics in terms of uh, <coughs> promoting that image of the country. And mm. uh, when um, Kenya relates with uh, these foreign nations, of course, Kenyans ask what is in it for, for, for the country? Because at the end of the day, in as much as you want to relate with China and bring in infrastructural projects into the country, you want to build uh, the country, there is always that aspect that you want to look at um, the balance of payment. If I recall correctly, the financial, I mean, the year 2017, uh, we had about 390 uh, 390 billion uh, trade uh, volume of trade in favor mm. of uh, China, mm. and then for Kenya it was just about 10 to 11 billion shillings. So mm. you look at that uh, total size of 400 billion in trade, mm. but only 300. I mean, only 11 billion shillings of uh, goods of Kenyan origin is mm. accessing mm. Uh, the Chinese market. So you ask your, you ask yourself in these missions that we <coughs> run uh, to these nations, how are we benefiting? Like for instance, exactly in China. Uh, you know, Sam. At the end of the day. Every country, every nation on the face of the earth has or must have strategic interests. And so a key element of foreign policy mm -hmm. is to push and promote this strategic national interest. Mm -hmm. Our engagement with the world mm -hmm. is premised on that reality mm -hmm. that we have certain strategic interests. Mm -hmm. One of those interests is the economic well-being of the nation and economic well-being that then percolates down to the ordinary Kenyan. And it is in that context mm -hmm. that we have been very aggressive in terms of uh, strengthening mm -hmm. the traditional bilateral and multilateral relationships mm -hmm. that Kenya has traditionally had. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you look at the market like the EU, mm -hmm. which has always traditionally been a key market for us, like for our flower farmer, we have always had mm -hmm. um, a very strong position, for instance, at the Amsterdam flower uh, uh, auctions or flower market. We, we want to strengthen our traditional markets, mm -hmm. but we also want to explore new opportunities, new markets. And that is why a key element of our foreign agenda today mm -hmm. is diversification diversifying the opportunities available to the country. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about China, for instance, we see China as a valued partner, <coughs> as a valued friend, right. and, um, and, 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 and a platform for this diversification agenda. It is true that the balance of trade today is in favor mm -hmm. of China, mm -hmm. but efforts are being made to rejig and to have a better equilibrium in terms of our relationship mm -hmm. with China. Mm -hmm. And that's why President Uhuru Kenyatta, who at Foreign Affairs, by the way, we call diplomat number one, mm -hmm. because he leads our <coughs> diplomatic agenda very well from the front, has been very key to engage <coughs> President Xi Jinping of China, basically engaging the Chinese government at the highest level, mm -hmm. to find a way and to find uh, a platform mm -hmm. to balance all this. Uh, last year alone, the president was in China twice. He attended the FOCAC summit, right. mm -hmm. and then he was also at the inaugural Shanghai Import Expo. Out of all these engagements, the mm -hmm. president and our team at Foreign Affairs extract certain things that are of value to Kenya. Mm -hmm. From the last one, for instance, let me just speak the Shanghai Import Expo, which was a very important platform. Mm -hmm. We were able to extract concessions that would see Kenya start to export certain uh, agricultural produce to the Chinese market. And at the moment, what is going on is what is called the sanitary and phytosanitary standardization to ensure that uh, the products we want to send to this market meet certain irreducible minimum standards. Mm -hmm. And we have the capacity to meet those standards. Mm -hmm. We have the capacity through CAFIS, for instance, to, to gauge these standards. and. Um, we are at a very advanced stage, and so soon mm -hmm. we want to see farmers of avocado, for <coughs> instance, right? Uh, farmers of uh, uh, of uh, macadamia, macadamia nuts, uh, uh, and other produce go to this to this market, but not just as raw produce, mm -hmm. as produce processed. that has been processed, right? And we have added value, and thereby create jobs as part of the Big Four agenda. Mm -hmm. and, and so I can assure you some, and I can assure every Kenyan that is uh, with us right now, okay. that very deliberate efforts are being made mm -hmm. 
to balance trade between ourselves, not only with China, mm -hmm. but with the other development and trading partners. So this conversation that you've held on <coughs> how to ensure that the standards meet the requirements of that market in mm -hmm. China, is it a conversation at the ministry level or have you already cascaded it down to would-be exporters in this country? Of course, uh, you know that uh, government is a seamless continuum. Mm -hmm. Government is not, uh, I mean, the Minister of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. is not an island within the architecture of government. Mm -hmm. And when the president goes to the Shanghai Import Expo, for instance, mm -hmm. he's accompanied by a team mm -hmm. that, is, um, that carries basically some delegation that mm -hmm. cuts across government. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there'll be a team from agriculture, which, which, which would be playing a, a critical role. There would, there would be a team from industry and, uh, and, and trade. Mm -hmm. And so this team, th there is, a, there is there's a, a platform, there is a process okay. that then is able to carry this agenda forward. And it would involve I importers and exporters of this produce. It would involve agencies like KFIS, which I have mentioned because it is important for standards and, uh, and, 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 and all these issues to do with the agricultural produce. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is a government agenda. Okay. The Minister of Foreign Affairs takes the lead because, as I said at the beginning, we are the window through which the world sees this country and the doorway through which Kenya engages with the world. Okay. Still, <coughs> back, back to the, the influence of the Chinese in this country and uh, the, the investment in infrastructure that has also now affected our public debt because now it's uh, the current estimates are... Um, the last time I checked, it was about 4.8, so I, I would estimate that it's more than 5 uh, trillion shillings in debt, and much of it has uh, quite a, a good proportion uh, being with the Chinese. So when you're making these deals that uh, we want, yes, Chinese to support investments in this country, are there any consideration on uh, what Kenyans should provide in this? Let me tell you some. <laughs> we hear a lot of stories mm -hmm. of how our debt level has hit crisis uh, proportions. You don't see the crisis? I hear a lot of stories which, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. they're alarmist stories. Mm -hmm. They're alarmist stories that are not supported by fact. They are more fiction than factual. Kenya's debt level is not anything extraordinary. In fact, if you were to compare Kenya's debt level mm -hmm. with other countries, mm -hmm. we are very much within the acceptable mm -hmm. limits where debt ought to relate at a certain level with the GDP mm -hmm. of a country. Mm -hmm. and, and I can assure you, there is absolutely no crisis as far as our debt level is concerned. Mm -hmm. I think the critical question that we should be asking is, mm -hmm. when we secure these credit facilities, are the funds applied appropriately mm -hmm. to sectors mm -hmm. that can then add value to our economic growth mm -hmm. and translate to shared prosperity mm -hmm. for all the 40 odd Kenyan people? Mm -hmm. And that is a critical question. And I believe that is where this country is headed. Mm -hmm. Investments that we have seen in infrastructure have done magic to this country. Some, you and I were here 10 or so years ago, mm -hmm. and we know where this country was sure. in terms of our infrastructure development and how much that stunted mm -hmm. our drive to transform the fortunes of this country. Mm -hmm. Whether the investment is coming to the agricultural sector to revive initiatives like Rivertex is being revived through our partnership with in the Indian government, Rivertex mm -hmm. in, um, in Eldred, mm -hmm. uh, the Indian government has given us support uh, in partnership with, with more university. Mm -hmm. Now, reviving Rivertex for me is critical. It's critical in the context of where we want to see Kenya. It's critical in the context of the president's big four agenda mm -hmm. of manufacturing, of universal health care, of food security, of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And we want these investments, therefore, to impact the lives of Kenyans positively by directing them to the right places. And that is what we are doing. And I believe that... Um, Perhaps we need to have a little bit more of a, a coherent, mm -hmm. objective, and factual conversation on this matter. Mm -hmm. I know major economies in the world, I'll not mention names, but I know major economies in the world where their debt levels are almost 100% mm -hmm. of their GDP. And, and Moshimu Ababu, yes. the, the mm -hmm. challenge with them is never 
the size of the debt, mm -hmm. but the impact of it and when it comes to repayment. Mm -hmm. Like in this country, I just checked that uh, by September 2018, the debt was at 5.1 trillion shares. Yes. And um, yes. when you compare it against the um, GDP, it's about just almost 60%, which mm -hmm. is within the range that yes, you may yes. want to refer mm -hmm. to. But when it comes to the cost of repayment, mm -hmm. like for instance, this year, there will be repayments that will have to be made for Eurobond and others. Like mm -hmm. we have a budget of uh, 3 trillion shillings and almost a trillion shillings is going to pay in debt. So mm -hmm. don't you think there's a challenge there because we spend so much in revenue that we collect to pay out debts instead of investing in development, despite the fact that yes, already money has come and developed um, some infrastructure? The bigger question, mm -hmm. of course, even at a personal level, Sam, if you are to take a credit facility, you must think about the repayment and uh, the impact that repayment is going to have on your other as the other aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. But by the time you choose to take this debt, mm -hmm. you have already done, because Kenyans, I mean, we don't just w wake up one morning and say, right. let us go to China mm -hmm. and, and pick this amount of uh, this amount of trillion yuan or or, or, or let us go to japan and, uh, uh, and and fly back home with this amount of this million yen no it, mm. it is part of a holistic agenda and that is why and, and i'm glad that you have mentioned the question of repayment mm -hmm. and, and and that goes hand in hand with the utility of how these resources are applied mm -hmm. and i want to emphasize that that is where the question ought to be the question ought to be, are we applying these resources appropriately so that even as we repay, the resources have already been invested in the right places anyway, and they're generating, generating um, uh, output that contributes to our growth and to our prosperity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is the direction this country is headed. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, the engagement of government with our bilateral and even multilateral partners like the IMF and the others is done in the context of Kenya's economic priorities, mm -hmm. our growth priorities and where we want this country to be. Mm -hmm. And so I, I will go back to the point that um, let us have a conversation that looks at the utility and the value mm -hmm. that the credit facilities coming into Kenya has, mm -hmm. uh, has achieved. And perhaps it might be useful mm -hmm. to do an analysis okay of maybe take a sample of some of these credit facilities and analyze which sectors have this money gone to mm -hmm. and how much are these sectors contributing to economic growth, how much are they are contributing to generation of uh, employment opportunities for, 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 for our young people, mm -hmm. and then ha whether that makes sense mm -hmm. in terms of the repayment. I believe it's making sense because mm -hmm. investment is not a cheap thing and uh, someone has to pay for it. Let's get specific. The standard gauge <coughs> railway at a cost of 327 billion shillings for phase one, Mombasa to Nairobi, and um, the grace period should be expiring this year, if I'm not mistaken. So mm. we'll begin to sort of uh, repay uh, that loan. But when you look at uh, the impact since May 31st of 2017, when the SGR was launched and the passenger train started to operate, there's a time last year we were celebrating 1 million passengers. So mm. when you look at um, the returns, I don't have the specific figure in terms of revenue, but for us to even break even mm -hmm. uh, the returns yes. versus the cost, it will take us some time. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, are you convinced, of, of course we cannot demolish as Jerry's already here, but are you convinced we made the right decision? Uh, Sam, I have no doubt whatsoever, mm -hmm. even if you had to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I would have no doubt whatsoever in my mind. Mm -hmm that the investment this country is making in infrastructure development mm -hmm. is spot on. Mm -hmm. It is necessary. Mm -hmm. Many years down the line, people will look back mm -hmm. and they will be happy that we made this investment. I remember when, uh, uh, when the US embarked on the great Marshall Plan that gave America today the, the interstate highways. Mm -hmm. Some people thought this was a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. But you look back today, a hundred or so years mm -hmm. down the line, mm -hmm. and you can say this was a smart investment. So I have no doubt that SGR is a smart investment. I have no doubt that the massive infrastructure, infrastructure development projects we are seeing across the country are smart investments. The economics of it may have um, matters that ought to be analyzed further, okay. but as far as the vision, mm -hmm and the investment is concerned, I have no doubt that these are smart investments and Kenyans should be actually 
looking forward to more investment in mm -hmm. upgrading our infrastructure capacity and infrastructure sophistication mm -hmm. uh, to an extent that then continues the momentum of our, of our economic growth. And I can assure you, because of these kind of investments, we are able to do certain things okay. that are improving our, um, our strategic position globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other day, some we hosted here a massive, massive historic conference, the Sustainable Blue Economic, uh, mm -hmm. economic mm -hmm. Conference, mm -hmm. where we brought to Kenya 184 countries, 17,800 delegates. All these people came here uh, because of uh, what Kenya has become in the global community of nations. Right. And when these people come here, you need capacity to host these people. I travel a lot around the world from where I'm sitting now at the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and I fly to some places and I appreciate the investment you've made at JKIA, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can just appreciate that we have an airport that is of a certain level. To, 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 to project the image of this country okay. and also to play a role. I appreciate SGR, I appreciate the investment in our road infrastructure. And so to answer your question without belaboring the point too much, definitely these are smart investments. And when we hear stories <coughs> of uh, discrimination against Kenyan workers working within the SGR system, do they concern you? Have you investigated? Have you had conversations with the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, the, of the Chinese government about these concerns? Some. At the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we love to say, and I will reiterate it here, that the welfare of every Kenyan, wherever that Kenyan is, across the length and breadth of this country, is our business. Mm -hmm. So that whether that Kenyan is working for the SGR, or that Kenyan is in Bhutan, mm -hmm. or Suriname, or wherever they are. It mm -hmm. is our business. Mm -hmm. And it is unacceptable for any Kenyan mm -hmm. to face any discrimination of any texture or complexion, whether here at home or elsewhere. It's even worse if it happens here. Mm -hmm. But some you also know that some individual actions should never be escalated to become communal responsibility so that when one person is found to have violated the law mm -hmm. then the law takes its course mm -hmm. and um, we have had incidents that have invited swift appropriate legal action and, and that is done by the relevant agencies mm -hmm. at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs we have always been at the forefront to promote good relations and if an incident occurs that may affect our bilateral relations or compromise the entitlements of our people, mm -hmm. we make these issues known very, very swiftly. Okay. And we have our diplomatic channels through which we deal with such matters. Yes, okay. absolutely. That. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, let, let's look at uh, some <laughs> numbers. There, there are some graphics that we have uh, showing uh, the cost of uh, travel for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as well as uh, the uh, Parliament, if we have that. Well, we'll be getting that shortly, but as we prepare that, uh, over the weekend we saw a story that uh, the <coughs> president has made 92 trips across the world since coming into office. They were comparing that uh, against uh, President Kibaki's 33 in, within 10 years. When you look at these visits, and of course they're expensive to sponsor, but what benefits would you say they accrue without repeating what you have said, <coughs> mm. but in a sense, why is the job the president going to do, why can't it be done by the Minister of Foreign Affairs? Mm. Mm. Then... This is an important question, and it, it, will be, it will be irresponsible to duck this kind of question at whatever level, whether it's at the level of the ministry or the level of parliament. Mm -hmm. We must harmonize mm -hmm. our travel, mm -hmm. our expenditure, mm -hmm. and make it commensurate mm -hmm. to the best interests mm -hmm. of the country. At the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have a very clear policy mm -hmm. in terms of uh, travel. We have a clear policy on uh, size of delegation, mm -hmm. relevance mm -hmm. of activity, and sharing of responsibilities. We have a fantastic team at the Ministry, for instance, uh, uh, led by our Cabinet Secretary, Dr. Monica Juma. And we work in such a way that there are certain responsibilities the CS will undertake. She undertakes them very well. The other day I saw some kind of survey 
on performance. Mm -hmm. If you had asked me, I would have actually ranked her as CS Monica Juma top because mm -hmm. of her performance. Mm -hmm. And, 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 she, and she, she, she's leading the team very well. There are responsibilities that I undertake mm -hmm. on behalf of the ministry. Mm -hmm. I, I've just indicated, I've just come back from Brussels mm -hmm. for the first EU African Union um, ministerial consultation, an important platform. Mm -hmm. There are responsibilities undertaken by our peers, uh, Ambassador uh, Makau, uh, Kamau Masha, uh, Masharia, oh, Masharia okay. Kamau, mm -hmm. who another accomplished diplomat. And um, then we have our team of mm -hmm. technocrats mm -hmm. at various levels, heads of directorates, our ambassadors, and we share responsibilities very neatly mm -hmm. across our team mm -hmm. at Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. We have no doubt that if you are to undertake an audit of how the ministry uh, spends our travel uh, budget, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. For the president, the president participates in activities that are at his level because there are certain activities which are presidential mm -hmm. and will require the presence of the president himself and I can assure you some and perhaps a better dispassionate analysis will be done when His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta is out of office mm -hmm. at some point but mm -hmm. I can tell you mm -hmm. all the activities the president has undertaken okay. have been appropriate they have been in sync with the strategic national interests of Kenya. Okay. And that's why it is no surprise mm -hmm. that today President Uhuru occupies a very hallowed, a very venerable position mm -hmm. in the global scheme of things. Okay. You should have been at the UN General Assembly in September and witnessed the whole world mm. acclaiming mm -hmm. his presence on the stage and his speech to the world at the General Assembly or his performance during the Paris Peace Forum mm -hmm. uh, last year where I had the privilege to accompany him. And, and the fact that today the UN has honored President Uhuru as the global champion for youth. Right. The AU has honored him as a champion for the blue economy. Mm -hmm. And all this tells you that you have a president that has actually cut a niche among the global community of nations and among his peers. Okay. It is his presence and engagement that is a contribution to this. Okay, so it's money well spent, Sam. It's let, money very well let, spent. Let, <laughs> let, let, let's look at how much money we are talking about. We have, uh, if we have that slide now, that um, the national government, uh, the first quarter, uh, spent uh, 429 billion shillings. That is the global figure. But that, that's are, for the total budget. Yes, the, okay. yes. But there are specific figures on uh, just nec the next one on uh, the foreign affairs, mm -hmm. foreign travel. Uh, expenditure. I think that's for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Domestic foreign travel, 2.9 billion shillings. There's one that I uh, go specific to the National Assembly and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, right, so domestic travel is 1.7 billion shillings and foreign travel 1.1 mm -hmm. uh, billion shillings for the national government. The whole government, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and then uh, specifically National Assembly spent 669 million shillings in foreign travel. Mm -hmm. Uh, in travel that, rather, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spent uh, 409 million shillings on foreign travel. I, I, I know the, uh, the, <coughs> basic, the basic mandate of the ministry is uh, exactly that, and for you to advance the Ministry of Foreign Affairs agenda, you have to travel. But should we be looking at this as too high vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the development expenditure in this country? What I'll, sh what I'll be looking at is um, the... You, the, the, the value, mm -hmm. the value of the travel. Mm -hmm. I, it is actually interesting. I hadn't looked at this uh, a little more keenly. Mm -hmm. The parliament spends over 200 million shillings more than the Minister of Foreign, Affairs. Minister of Foreign Affairs. And all these travels are for the country? Th they're in the, in the interest of the country, of course. But I can tell you that the 400 million or so spent by the Minister of Foreign Affairs is a budget that covers every aspect of our foreign service. Mm -hmm. It covers the aspect of the top leadership of the ministry. It covers the aspect of uh, our officers and their operations across, across the globe. And so it is actually a very modest budget. It's a budget that makes sense in the broader scheme of things. Because remember, foreign affairs is about foreign service. Mm -hmm. It's about foreign service. Mm -hmm. And um, our engagement, as I've said, is about strategic interest. And so this expenditure must be seen vis-a-vis -vis that strategic interest. Is Kenya cutting it? Mm -hmm. Is Kenya hacking it? Is Kenya achieving our agenda of projecting, protecting, and promoting mm -hmm. our best possible image globally? And I can tell you, if the value of what we are doing is 400 million, 
then we are doing extremely <laughs> well in terms of expenditure. You are doing so well according we are doing to very you. Well, yes. Um, yes. I, I want to look at uh, the regional issues uh, <coughs> that, that, that Kenya faces. And first of all, the question of uh, terrorism and the impact that it has on not just um, the image of the country, but even in the, um, uh, the, the economic uh, strength of the country. And specifically, once upon a time, we were told that there was going to be build, uh, built a wall between Somalia and Kenya then that story died. We no longer hear of it. Mm -hmm. Your ministry is sits at the <coughs> National Security uh, Council. What is the progress on that? Is it something that you'll ever see uh, happening or is it just a bad idea that has been forgotten? <laughs> you know, uh, government projects have got a cycle. I, I know, and, and some, I have a bit of experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been a member of parliament for 10 years mm -hmm. and uh, during my time as a member of parliament, mm -hmm. I had the privilege of being chairman of some key committees. I chaired the public accounts committee, I chaired the legal and justice committee, I co-chaired the, 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 the committee on the constitution. Mm -hmm. I was minister for youth affairs and sports. Mm -hmm. I know something mm -hmm. about public policy mm -hmm. and um, budgeting and expenditure. Mm -hmm. And I know that government programs and projects are cyclic. They're cyclic. They go through a certain cycle. A major project of that magnitude would certainly go through certain cycles. And because it is also a project that would impact, would impact uh, uh, an international border, mm -hmm. there the, 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 the issues involved will be more complex. Mm -hmm. And so I want to believe mm -hmm. that those placed in charge of this agenda, those directly responsible for this project, would definitely be doing it in the best interest of Kenya. I would not attempt mm -hmm. to answer specific questions about this project because I'm not directly involved okay. in it, but I want to believe that whoever is carrying responsibility for this would be doing it in the best interest of the country and they'll be following through those cycles. Mm -hmm that are relevant mm -hmm. in terms of uh, implementing government. I'll take government the point projects. that... Uh, but, but let me just also say uh -huh. that uh, this agenda of violent extremism mm -hmm. is, is a key issue, Sam, and it is one of the key issues we were discussing in Brussels last week. And, and, and Kenya must remain strong, we mm -hmm. must remain unbowed mm -hmm. in the fight against violent extremism. Right. We become a target because we exemplify we are the epitome we manifest some of the best values the world shares mm -hmm. democracy f liberty freedom of the press mm -hmm. uh, good governance mm -hmm. we exemplify all those values here mm -hmm. we are also a focal point of global interests mm -hmm. and you can see that a lot of the commercial interests that have been hit by these extremists mm -hmm. they are not necessarily Kenyan owned interests. Right. They are interests that are owned by our friends from other parts of the world. Right. And so when this happens, mm -hmm. we declare that we are unbowed, mm -hmm. but we also send the message that this is a global war that requires global partnership. And we are happy mm -hmm. that our global partners and friends mm -hmm. always stand with us and they are working with us in the fight against violent extremism. Mushima Babu, I'll shortly be looking at uh, some of the <coughs> feedback that uh, has been sent to us on 2242 as well as on Twitter at Citizen TV Kenya. But before I do that, there are two issues that I would want, want us to uh, discuss before you conclude. And first of all, it's the United Nations Security Council. Kenya wants to be a member of that 15-member uh, uh, team. Uh, the the non-permanent membership, 21-22. Yes, 20, yes, 20, yes, yes, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yes. I don't know how the progress, but first, before we even get to the progress, why is it important to be a member of the UNSC? Once upon a time, Rwanda sat in that, uh, that, 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 that yeah, committee. What benefits does it bring the country? You see, for Kenya, mm -hmm. Kenya is like the symbol of peace, security, stability mm -hmm. in this region. Mm -hmm. We have always played a very critical role, you know this, Sam, um, in peacekeeping right now with Amisom in Somalia. Mm -hmm. We have been involved in keeping peacekeeping missions across the world, mm -hmm. not just in Africa, mm -hmm. across the world, Afghanistan, you will mm -hmm. find Kenyans there, uh, uh, Liberia. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so Kenya has built a very impressive portfolio of capacity, experience, and um, pedigree in terms of being the global face mm -hmm. of peace, security, and stability. Mm -hmm. This is experience that you need within the UN Security Council, mm -hmm. especially at a time when the UN Security Council is um, subject 
of, of reforms because mm -hmm. we are at the critical stage of discussing UN reforms generally. Mm -hmm. In fact, Kenya sits mm -hmm. in what we call the C10, Committee of 10 of the African Union, working on mm -hmm. UN reforms. And so we believe that by Kenya sitting around the table of 15, okay. at the very apex of the United Nations, Kenya will bring this experience to bear for Africa, for our region here in the Horn of Africa, mm -hmm. and for the global south, and for the whole world, because mm -hmm. the values we hold, mm -hmm. the values that Kenya exemplifies, mm -hmm. truly are global values that we share with most of the world. Okay. Yes. So how, what is the progress? We have made very good progress. We have already announced mm -hmm. our, um, our candidature. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of 192 member states, is it 192 or 93? 193. Yes. yes. So how many do you need to win? Uh, it is normally uh, a majority vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a majority vote. So if you have and at I, least a half, we yes, you, you need a majority vote. And, but and you, 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 you need now? a clear. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to. Some, you know, you are in a campaign. Okay. All right. <laughs> we we know, with, with the campaign. In a campaign, what I can assure Kenyans uh. that this is an important agenda. Mm -hmm. It is one of the reasons why we have been on a, a, a diplomatic offensive mm. to, 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 to increase our footprint okay. and, and, and to increase our visibility. Mm -hmm. It is an important agenda for this country mm -hmm. and, and, and for this region. Mm -hmm. We are appealing to our friends okay. across the world to support mm -hmm. this agenda because Kenya would be a valued addition to the UN Security Council. Okay. Yes. I wish you had more time. But finally, uh, we saw the president <coughs> attending the inauguration of a uh, new president, president of DRC, Chisakedi. Yes. Uh, Chisakedi. yes. No, you confused me to get it wrong. Uh, but uh, we, we, we saw him there. Out of 17 presidents that had been invited, it's only him that went. It, it's a controversial election. <coughs> Why did he? You know, we have a... Um, and, 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 and this is also born out of our... Uh, it's out of experience, mm. it is out of our constitutional reality, mm -hmm. that it's important to respect the popular will mm. over people, over nation, mm -hmm. and that a country, every country in the world, deserves mm. to be given the space and the opportunity to grow their institutions. Mm. DR Congo has had its fair share of challenges. Mm. They managed to pull off this election in, in uh, amidst some really, really serious mm. challenges, but they mm. pulled it off. Mm. I think the world owes DR Congo. They owe DR Congo the space mm. to move forward okay. and the support to build their democracy and to deepen their, their institutions mm. of democracy and, um, and, and, and governance. Mm. And, 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 and actually, I'm very happy that uh, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta mm -hmm. went to Kinshasa mm -hmm. and that as Kenya, we are sending the message that uh, a country that has taken the big leap, it's a big leap for DR Congo, mm -hmm. to see a democratic, peaceful transfer of power. Right. And put faith mm -hmm. in their institutions of democracy, their electoral body, mm -hmm. their judicial institutions. Mm -hmm. It is important for Africa that we support DR Congo to sustain this path towards democratization and, uh, and, and good governance. But that, that appears to be the view of Kenya, <coughs> not for the other 16 heads of state. We speak for Kenya. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good point. Um, yes. Larry Obara mm. says that I think as a country we, we are moving forward in terms of foreign relations. Talk of strong ties with other countries now due to the fresh team at uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Someone else is saying, Anita Soina says, uh, watching from Rongai, that man Ababu Namwamba is just one year in office, but if you look at the work he has done, especially in creating a good image for the country, he is overworking. Congratulations, Wazili. Really. <laughs> Thank but, you. But I appreciate someone, it, th Soida. There's someone, there's someone who doesn't feel as enthusiastic uh, <coughs> as, as uh, Anita. Mm -hmm. That is comment from Eldred. Many Kenyans still wonder whether the positions of CAS is uh, worth our taxes, especially the fact that the positions went to political rejects. No wonder the recurrent expenditures across ministry have skyrocketed. Parents are committing suicide for lack of fees, on the other hand. Sad. Mm -hmm. what, does, what do you have to say about that? Oh, I, I can... I can I can associate myself with the frustrations mm -hmm. of, of, of Kenya. So first of all, let me, let me appreciate Larry and, uh, and Anita out there for mm -hmm. your very, very kind uh, comments. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But for, for, for this brother from, uh, from Eldred, I can tell you that, uh, first of all, mm -hmm. every position in government mm -hmm. is, uh, makes sense in the context of the agenda of government. Okay. I, um, I feel that those of us who have opportunity to serve in this position have already demonstrated that these positions are useful okay. and, and we are 
making very solid substantive contribution to the development agenda of this country so there's no doubt about that okay. but the frustration about um, parents who can't pay fees even if you are to remove uh, uh, above from office today it will not change the big picture the big picture will be changed by our continued drive mm. to send more agricultural produce to china to open more markets in india to great and attract greater investment in kenya mm -hmm. to open river tax in eldoret which we are doing by the way we are reopening river tax out of our very aggressive <laughs> agenda <laughs> to engage with the Indian government and Indian that <laughs> is what will reduce the pain of Kenyans All the right. investments we are making uh -huh. and the expansion of opportunities we are driving in the best interest of Kenya with Mushima. our friends across the world